Hey everyone! So I was finally successful in making Pop Rocks candy. Uh, I've been working on this project for a while and believe it or not this turned out to be more difficult than aerogel or supercritical caffeine extraction or a number of my other projects. Um, even though in theory making Pop Rocks candy is simpler, it, uh, the devil's in the details and figuring out all the right times and mixing rates and all that stuff turned out to be pretty challenging. So let me tell you about Pop Rocks and how I made it. Pop Rocks candy is carbonated sugar candy. So it's really just high temperature sugar water that's been carbonated and then cooled with the carbonation still in the candy. So when the pressure is released on the chamber, you end up with little hard candies that have gas bubbles, CO2 bubbles in the candy. And then when you put the candy on your tongue, the bubbles are dissolved away and the CO2 escapes, making the popping sensation. So first I'll tell you how I successfully did this and then at the end of the video talk about all the things I did that didn't work. And you can just stop watching if it gets boring midway. So I start by making a, a melt of sugar on the stove and I followed a recipe that the Exploratorium published for making lollipops. So it's mostly sugar and water uh, but there's a few notable additions. Uh, corn syrup and cream of tartar which serve as interfering agents as they're called. So by making this high temperature candy situation, uh, when it cools down we actually don't want crystals to form. We want it to maintain a, a smooth glassy feel. So the corn syrup and the cream of tartar uh, prevent sugar crystals from forming. I also added a little bit of coloring and uh, raspberry flavor. So this one will be a, <laughs> a blue raspberry uh, sugar candy. So you might have heard about uh, candy thermometers. Uh, the reason that temperature is so important when making sugar candy is that it's related to the water content of the mixture. So if you start off with a uh, sugar solution that's mostly water and start to boil it, it will boil higher than 212 F because you've got a mixture of sugar and water. And as the mixture boils, if you keep adding heat to it, more water will, will boil away and the boiling temperature will continue to increase. So by measuring the temperature, what you're actually measuring is the water content of the, of the sugar mixture. And the, the uh, higher the temperature, the, the lower the water content. So uh, by stopping the mixture at a specific temperature, you can get exactly the right water content, which will tell you how flexible the resulting candy is. So for example, if you heat up to 280 degrees F and then cool that mixture down, you'll end up with a candy that's pretty rigid, whereas if you only heat it up to 260 degrees F, the resulting candy will be fairly flexible. As usual, I got a lot of my information for this project from patents, and one particular patent had a chart that showed the desirable uh, temperature and mixing time uh, for, for making high-quality Pop Rocks candy. So I knew what temperature I was shooting for, about 280 degrees F or 290, and the description in the patent was also quite helpful. So after I had my molten candy at 280 degrees F, I poured it into a preheated mixing chamber and then inserted uh, the mixer into it with the cap on top and proceeded to mix it with an electric drill for about three or four minutes. And uh, meanwhile, I attached a CO2 tank to this chamber and increased the pressure to about 600 PSI. And then after the mixing time is done, it's, uh, the chamber is just allowed to cool down. After that, I open the chamber up, and uh, as the pressure, as actually first I depressurized the chamber, and I could hear the candy cracking inside. So after opening the chamber up, I hit it with a hammer, and all the little broken pieces came out. And this is what Pop Rocks looks like. It's uh, fragments of, of sugar candy that have very small CO2 bubbles embedded in them. So admittedly, this, this candy is not very high quality. Uh, this, these, these Pop Rocks are not all that uh, fizzy. But I, I think I'll do a few more batches to see if I can get the quality a little bit better. But I'm, I'm fairly satisfied with how this is going now. Like I say, this project took a lot of time. I, I probably did 10 or 20 batches of these things, trying different things. And the major problem is sort of stirring uh, high temperature, high pressure mixture stuff. So originally, I, I machined a nice little aluminum reaction chamber that I thought was going to work really well and you know did a, a high temperature silicone o-ring and my plan was to put the sugar mixture inside here 
and uh, close it up and then heat it over a, you know, a, a blowtorch basically. And then to mix it, I was just going to invert the, the uh, chamber back and forth a few times, thinking that, well, it's such a small volume of melt in there, it, it'll probably carbonate just fine. But no, actually, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't carbonate just fine. The mixing needs to be much more vigorous. And the temperature control needs to be much tighter as well. I thought that by doing a thick-walled aluminum chamber, I wouldn't have any problems with temperature control. But as it happens, I, measuring the temperature of the sugar itself is quite difficult because the wall of the, the chamber is so thick and the volume of liquid in there is so small that it's really hard to know the exact temperature of the sugar mixture. So the next thing I tried was to use my trusty uh, steel pipe uh, thing that I've used for you know the supercritical stuff and that, and the pressure rating is quite high, and it's convenient because it has a screw top so I can open it up and close it pretty easily. And to this I added a thermo well, which is just a compression fitting that I modified by drilling it out and then putting a, um, a piece of copper pipe, an eighth inch copper tube through there. And I soldered the end of the tube closed with lead-free solder and um, put it through the compression fitting so that I had a thermo well and then inserted a, a thermocouple into the well. So this way I could monitor the temperature of the melt as it was going on. I wouldn't have to worry about measuring the wall of the chamber or anything like that. And then for stirring, what I did is I, I got a fairly low-cost water valve from the hardware store and took it apart and made a shaft for it that would fit through the, the seal, the gland at the top, so that I could stir the mixture just by turning the rod, and hopefully the valve gland would seal everything in. And this actually worked really well. I was surprised. It leaks a tiny bit at 600 psi, but it's really quite manageable. And then I just made a uh, another brass plug and just uh, soldered up the, the valve output, which I didn't want. Originally, I thought it was going to work best to put the mixture, the raw sugar ingredients, into the reaction vessel and seal it up and then just use it on a hot plate. And this, you know, kind of worked, but again, the problem is stirring and I can't really see what's going on in there. Even though my stirring device works pretty well, it doesn't work well enough uh, to, to stir the entire contents of the thing. So what I would end up with is burned sugar on the walls of the chamber and, and uncooked sugar in the middle of the chamber. So it, all, it really works a lot better to, to cook everything in a saucepan on the stove and then preheat the reaction chamber and then put it all together and just stir it in the reaction chamber, which is actually what was suggested in the patent. So I should, I should have just followed its advice from the start. So let's try one of these candies. It's, it's pretty good. I mean, it's... It's definitely carbonated candy, and it has that sort of um, sort of sour taste that you get from CO2 on your tongue, which is the carbonic acid that forms on your tongue, but it's really nothing like um, commercial Pop Rocks, so there, there's some more experimenting to be done. It's still pretty good, and the taste is actually not bad. That raspberry flavoring um, works pretty well. Most of the failures that I had were just um, candy that wasn't carbonated. So I had, you know, 19 batches up until now that were just solid candy, or the, the, the amount of carbonation was so low that when I opened the chamber after having it pressurized, the candy didn't even break apart into pieces. It was really just kind of a solid mass. And then I had plenty of batches that were overheated and ended up just being carbonized or caramelized sugar. I mean, that was useless. Um, other batches were kind of liquidy at the end for some reason. It really just temperature control and stirring is the main problem. Uh, making sure that everything is exactly the same temperature and being mixed quite evenly. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.